Hello, welcome to another video on alias tutorial. This is going to be on ball corners. And I have actually developed a file that's for sale on my website. There's a link in the descriptions. And it's basically a bunch of corners you could use to practice on. But before we get into that, I want to show you guys how to do a very simple straight up square. Hello and welcome to another video uh, tutorial with alias um, automotive. You could also use alias surfacing for this. And what I'm going to do is a ball, a ballpoint corner. So um, a ballpoint corner is anywhere where basically three edges meet up and you're filleting them. So um, I want to show you guys what the what alias does automatically with the round tool just so you can see the different sort of like solutions for it, right? If I click on these edges like that and I press enter and I shade that up, see it gives me, it, it made this sort of corner using three different uh, surfaces. And I've actually seen some people use this sort of technique to make corners, which is, I guess you would call it a valid technique, but it's not really the, 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 well, how how it's really used in the automotive industry we use um we use a different sort of surface structure and um and if even if i if i query at it and click on here too it shows you another way of sort of coming up with these sort of solutions and then um but this is still this is still a little too complex for for these corners and on on the end of the day any solution that gives you your the solution that is necessary then it's fine but um but in the automotive industry, we tend to have a lot of control over our surfaces and um, and we have to do a lot of custom ballpoint corners. It happens all day. Um, this one I, I don't like at all just because all of the all the points are all merging here and it really it's not really a good look. So uh, let me let me query edit and then re and undo that. So how we do it in the automotive industry is actually with the fillet tool and then making our own square and project aligning it. So let's just slowly start building it. I'm gonna go to surfaces, <clears throat> multi-surface fillet, and I want curvature. Curvature is important. Um, a lot of people, they'll try to use tangency everywhere because it's easier, but actually in the end, it's gonna make you do more work because if something is curvature, um, it, it helps you relate with the, with the surrounding surfaces and it makes it easier to make transitional surfaces or these sort of corner surfaces. So remember, let's go to uh, G2 curvature and, um, and for, for the first one, I'm going to go edge align. <clears throat> and, and I tend to delete the history real quick. So what I do is I have it hotkeyed up to my W. But if you if you don't, you could go to delete delete construction history, <clears throat> and then now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this corner, um, but I'm not gonna use edge align on this one because if I did, look what happens. See this this um my my the structure of this fillet is already sort of twisting and stuff, and I don't want that right now. So um so what I'm gonna do is here instead of edge align, I'm gonna use extend, <clears throat> and then. On, on this last corner, I'm actually going to use edge line again because if you see, there's this edge and this edge, so so it's fine using edge line, right? Now I have I have this sort of structure, and I need to move all of these back. So how I'm going to do it is go to object edit, extend. Um, a lot of times I see people here use the trimming tools. Don't do that. Um, always try to keep, especially in these tra um, transitional surfaces. Always try to keep it edge to edge. It will really help you um, start, uh, down the line. So now what I'm going to do is select all of them and delete the history, which I just did. And then I'm going to use the the extend tool, which I got I got um, hotkeyed up to my E, um, and to extend this back. And then I could I could if I press Control Alt, I could sort of snap it. And then I click here and snap it. And then if I click here, I snap it. And and then now. Now I have this this sort of corner I need to solve, right? Um, a lot of times this is where people maybe they'll put like a blend point here to here or I don't, like um, or to here, I guess, right? I don't know. In the in the I'm trying to figure out how they actually do the 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 automatic version, but that's not how that's not how it's done in the automotive industry. What we do is we align. I use my object edit. <clears throat> we have to move this back. So object edit align 
and um, and then G2 uh, and then I click here and then I move this back like that okay and then a lot of times I'll I'll move it farther back and then I'll twist this forward like this and then I'll move this out like that when you're doing this sort of thing you need to be very conscious of what happens after this point um, whether you're breaking maybe some sort of curvature or something like that but um, but for right now, since I'm just showing you a very simple example, uh, it, you know it's fairly it's fairly easy. So we go like that, and we move this out, and we move this out to give it more better spacing or distribution of the CVs. So now I sort of have um uh like I, I can sort of start getting a square going if I have if I have a curve here, right? So I'm gonna grab these and isolate them and then I'm gonna use my blend curve which is here um, blend curve toolbox here and I'm gonna select here and here so now I have uh, now if I if I unhide everything see now I have a nice little little square right there right so I'm gonna use my square tool which is surface um, uh, boundary surface square uh, Degrees is going to be five and five, and collinear is actually going to be it's going to be check mark. But I want to show you guys what it what it actually means. So I'm going to select this, this, and this, right? So you see, it made me it made a square. But if you notice, the the alignment is completely wrong, right? It's like it looks all all messed up. That's what the collinear um that's what the collinear option is. So like let's go slowly, like right? And collinear, what it means is that once it it starts developing this surface. It's gonna these CVs. It's gonna look at the CVs here, and it's gonna try to make them collinear, right? So let's see boundary one, and we click it. You see now it sort of fixes that, and then boundary three, and then boundary four. See? So now, now um, even though the curvature failed, I'm not really too worried about it right now. Um, and uh, and the 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 final sort of step is basically aligning it and, and pr uh, trimming this area right you could do that multiple ways you could project this curve onto this trim it and then align it or what i always do in a tool that i always use is um is the project align tool but before i do that before i do that i'm gonna i'm gonna edit my i'm gonna edit my my corner just to sort of I mean my blend curve just to sort of make the distribution a little better right so then from here <clears throat> I can uh, I'll delete I can delete this curve because I already have my surface there and that's gonna delete my history <clears throat> and now I could use uh, my object edit align and then um, I could do curvature which is g2 and then I could do project align and then uh, Project align means that it's gonna it's gonna project this surface into another surface, and then uh, the surface you select, and it's gonna try to align it to that. So I'm gonna choose normal, and then I'm gonna select this edge first, and I'm gonna select this edge second. So now I have my that edge is curvature to that, and then if I if I uh, delete the history, I always delete the history when I'm doing these, uh, and then I trim, which is in surface edit, trim trim surface. Select it, uh, select it again where I want to trim it, trim it, and keep. So then there you go. And even though there's like you see like a little you you see a gap here, all that is is actually the tessellation or the quality of the viewing, right? So if I go here to uh, I guess it would be here and then to tolerance, if I go point zero zero one, it should it should uh, hold on, let me. And then we go to accurate. There you go. And that is basically a ball point corner. If we rem if we remember, if we do the curvature check on these corners, it, I didn't get curvature. So what I'm gonna do is actually is actually um uh and ac when when it says max curvature deviation one, what it usually means is that is that it's not finding curvature because this is a flat panel. So whenever you're finding curvature on um, uh, on a completely flat panel, if if it says curve max curvature dev one, uh, I I wouldn't worry about it too much. You could still sort of use like your line tools 
to sort of to sort of um, you know get that back in place but um, there's nothing too much to worry about but if you noticed all I did was use my align tool uh, f uh, G2 edge and um, and then I, I clicked on this thing and then now I have curvature everywhere and so this is basically what what a traditional ballpoint corner is now uh, I want to go through I'm gonna go um to my I'm gonna open up my Electra file I'm just gonna show you guys the hundreds of well not hundreds but all the different places where they just come out and so you guys can kind of see how it how it looks in a real project and then after that I'm gonna show you guys I have a file that that um that I sell on my website that had it's a basically a practice file and I'm gonna do a couple a couple of ballpoint corners on that file so um so stay tuned towards the end to uh to um to learn more okay so let's see where i can find my ball point my ball corner so for example um here this is all if i if i pick this shader and by isolate here's one why isn't it there you go here's here's one uh down here there's probably another here there's another um there maybe down here probably see this is another and this one right here um and honestly it, a lot of um a lot of other ones are basically kind of like the same sort of structure you know like it's um it's something that's very that happens all day and you're doing it like you know after a while you uh, see there's another one right here uh this one um once once you've actually worked on a, you know um hundreds and hundreds of these you sort of start they become very easy and intuitive and there's a bit of an art to where you decide to actually um project the 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 side right like you know how there's there's always three edges that are you know side to the edge to edge and there's one that that gets projected on right and that might be a little difficult to know which one which one um which side you should choose and it really depends on the angle and honestly it's sort of it's one of those things that just only with time do you start sort of start figuring out what you want to do with it you know <clears throat> um and 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 so actually let me let me open up the the file i actually made for you guys to, so you guys can practice different ball corners uh in your uh in your life so look at this one's even this one's basically a ball corner um and I, I wrote an algorithm for it so let me let me show you guys what what uh what it looks like so this is the file you get and um this was actually produced uh with grasshopper so it will be an ingest so remember to import it in and um, basically i just wrote an algorithm that produces all these corners um completely uh, randomly um, uh, with some certain parameters so that it doesn't get too crazy and um, and so it's a good way to sort of practice uh, you know just developing ball corners obviously I um, always I always encourage to you know maybe change the sizes up may, you know m make one one smaller one bigger and and try to make these transitions you know um, this is very much one of those one of those the one of those things that it just takes a long time to to really get like an in, like intuition over it. So um, so don't be too uh, uh, don't be too worried about about how long it takes you or anything like that. And again, remember that since these are all flat, a bunch of them are going to have um, the red curvature with deviation one. So don't don't um, don't don't worry too much about that, you know. And uh, as you see here, when I'm doing this little one, um, you just gotta remember that the, to try to keep the edges lined up with with um, with themselves, you know, so that so that it makes everything a lot easier for for um, for you to find that curvature, you know. Um, if you notice here, I, I made the the side ones a little smaller, and it's always good when uh, whenever there's the the biggest one, you know, it's I usually use its counter edge as a um, as the one that I project and trim on you know and um, and obviously even if um, even if you see how I did it you know I always encourage to to try out different methods or different you know uh, uh, different corners and stuff like that because you never know uh, you know um, uh, in the end you learn a lot from from every from every time you try it you know 
in this example I'm even doing some a little more like CV manipulation and I even use the move CV tool to sort of try to try to make that curvature even better um, but you see once I eliminate all of these little green um, uh, curvature breaks I still get curvature deviation one and um, and to explain it mathematically speaking is curvature is basically the the measurement of the radius of that surface but since there is no radius because they're flat that's why you get this sort of deviation one so uh, so don't worry about it if the edges are flat if you're doing a ball corner and all the edges have some volume to it have some radius to them then most of the time you need to you need to figure out how to get everything nice and curvature but if it's flat, remember curve deviation one is is okay. Um, there's no real need to because in the end, honestly, even if I'm even if you use your move CV tool, you're only moving it about 0 0.0001 millimeters. So it's not really at that point you're just doing a mathematical equation, not really surfacing. You know, kind of wasting your time a bit. Obviously, it depends on what type of uh, what, what type of system you're on and what type of um, you know um, in terms of the studio you're at. Um, but anyways, it's not it's not um, that's sort of I'm just I'm just trying to explain the reasoning behind it um, And as you see here, I'm just sort of doing the same thing, you know uh, after this Let me let me uh, fast forward it a bit So you like when you when you look at it going quick too, you sort of see how the steps are very very simple and um, and uh, There's a lot of logic to uh, to to the you know a lot of times too. what I'm doing here is I'll actually delete the the fillet and then i might do a freeform blend between them you know like a lot of times if if like let's say you did a lot of manipulation and and all of a sudden your cv structure is really really dirty um you know instead of trying to clean all of it a lot of times i'll just delete it and then i'll add a freeform blend on it and then i'll, then I'll start that as a as a way to um sort of start making my surfaces you know um, another thing i do is sometimes i'll i'll just use the my blend curves and then make a square uh, again, you know, instead of like manipulating these fillets, just because sometimes you know you can be manipulating them and then it gets a little, it gets a little crazy. So you sort of have to rebuild that corner surface. So um, there's definitely a lot of ways to do that. Um, I in this particular example, I'm using the freeform, but um, but you know, in the end of the day, it's all about you know understanding how to approach these sort of structures and then you know whatever tool you use it doesn't really it's not it's not really that important for example also that blend curve if you don't like blend curves you could easily add a curve that has five degrees and then use um and then use uh, uh maybe the line tool to get that blend curve in there you know same thing so let me uh, let me fast forward so you guys can see how, how it looks nice and quick so there is a bit of an art that sort of becomes more and more intuitive when you're doing ball corners and it's basically figuring out where to put that curve and align it into your uh, into your into your your model. So um, so even as you see here, uh, I've been doing this for eight years, and I still you know um, professionally, and I still sort of find it. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I don't know what what's more convenient, you know, doing it on this side or this edge or this edge, and. Um, and but obviously over time it's easier for to find that solution in your head and you start you, st you sort of start seeing it quicker. Um, uh, but all, obviously all that all that is is just practice, and that's also why I sort of made this file. You know, it wasn't too difficult to develop this in Rhino. I also saved it as an iGES file so that maybe if um, if you use another sort of NURB software and you want to practice ball corners also with this sort of technique, feel free to do so as long as it could read that. But um, but yeah, I hope this video helped out, and um, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.